Hey everybody, this is Reggie, the uh, appliance repair nerd. We've got a, uh, a video now on how to change a coupler on a direct drive washer. Uh, typically, Whirlpool, Kenmore, Roper brands uh, are direct drives. Uh, basically, if you can tip the washer over and you see a motor transmission, it's a direct drive. So anyway, um, first thing we need to do is take off this panel or lean it back. So you have a screw here or two screws in the back, uh, which is which you take off with a Phillips head screwdriver, which I've done already. You slide it forward, take it back. Next, you remove these clips. Use your screwdriver. You pop right out. Now, you remove your cover, lift your hood. Oh, so no, I always forget, I don't know why. Your lid switch, you always want to unplug. Grab your lid here. Before pull up, and that exposes the complete guts of the machine. This one's a little rough. This one is actually going to the recycling yard. It's getting uh, scrapped, so uh, I thought I'd use it as a good example of what to do. So, just to get a better camera angle, I'm going to tilt it on this hand truck. Typically, you don't want to have washers tilted sideways because your transmission oil will leak out if you do do it for a short amount of time. So the first thing you do is take these clips off that holds your pump. So if you have to repair your pump, I think I've got a few spiders on this old Betsy here. Get rid of them. These are your, your, this is your pump, which pumps out all your water, it's connected to the motor. So you remove those clips, take it off just like that. I usually lean it right here. Um, if you do have to repair this, this is basically what you need to do is take these clips off uh, and you gotta repair it. Put these away somewhere, you know where they're at, you need to back on the lid, you need to go back to that. And then you have to remove these clips that screw. Or a 5 16th nut driver. Same process, screwdriver on the side, pops right out. Pops right out. You can unplug your motor. Thing. About 15 years old, so probably has never been unplugged. It's a little stubborn. And this, watch this, this is your capacitor. Now, even though your washer is not plugged in, the capacitor still holds uh, voltage. So be very careful not to touch that with your bare hand. Let's see. So now you're removing the motor. So now you know what you need to do to replace your motor. And there should be a coupler connected to it, and it's not. If you look down here, you see the coupler broke off. And this is a coupler they don't even make anymore. It's discontinued. And it got so bad, it broke in half. And it's supposed to be three uh, shafts on here. See how smooth that is? Came right off. So what we're going to do is replace that with a coupler that's modern age. So and typically these couplers break um, based on wear and tear, but usually from overloading. Uh, what the coupler is, is made to do is protect the motor. Uh, if there's a jam, text the motor in the transmission, if something jams up in there, it actually breaks uh, to free up the motor. Um, so I have I do have this part on my website. So I do have these couplers on my website. These are the best kind to use. Um, I'm gonna compare this to the old one. As you can see the difference, this one has a metal ring on the inside, this one does not. The design, uh, if you know anything about engineering, the, uh, a triangle is the strongest structure 
in the known world and this is a lot of like three triangles on it for, for strength and durability so uh, I do have sell these on my website there's a link uh, below that will show you the uh, that can lead you to my website and it's uh, leaves under ten dollars uh, for these you have a new bushing and everything so first thing you do all right so put a little bit of grease around the back end so this one's gonna go on the motor this one goes right, and this is your transmission. So it's going around the transmission. So you just line it up. It's kind of an oval shape. Just press it on firm with your thumb, but you'll need to do more than that. So what I use is a socket and a hammer. Just put it right around the ring, and just give it a light tap. You see it's on there so the reason why I use a socket is because it surrounds the whole metal ring and allow and it, it evens out the pressure because if you use like a screwdriver or something and do it on one side you can actually break these things so uh, socket or something round will bang it on there uh, now for the motor usually the motor just slides right on so we have it on, now we have it on our motor. Um, and remember it's the short end because this end is where your pump goes. Now back over here, we're gonna put our bushing on. I typically like to have it the space side down. That way you can look underneath and line up the motor. <coughs> so also, there are bushings that come off that go on the motor. So just make sure you put them all on there because if, if it's lined up wrong, it won't, will not fit. So we're going to turn this shaft to line everything up. Pops right on. It's supposed to pop right on. Of course it's going to be a hard time now. There we go. Boop, boop, pops on. That pops right on. Put your mounting brackets. Slide in the hole, you have to lift the engine up or motor motor up a little bit. Slide that on. Alright, and the other one was already on, so beware of that, but that'll keep it from going on properly. Push that on. Screws back. And if your, your wash don't have these screws on it, it's not a big deal. They're mainly used for shipping from the manufacturer. So the racks stay on there fine without them. And you put your... Now, this thing has to line up because it's oval shaped. What you do is, I would, by hand, go underneath here and turn the coupler, which turns the shaft, and will line up the pump. That goes straight on. Put on your brackets. Now we're not done yet because the tricky part is getting that cabinet back on. So now all that is put back together. You want to make sure your wire is on. It doesn't matter which one goes in which. You might have a, you might hear it short out or just opposite, but it's still it's okay. Capacitors do that. Push this in. Make sure it's lined up. Push it in. Alright, so now we're going to lift our washer back up. Let's work these off. Tear it all over. Grab 
Now the key to this is there are tabs on the side over here. Tab over there and there's a slit underneath. So that's gonna need to line up. So first look inside your washer. Be sure the bottom is tucked underneath. The bottom of the cabinet is underneath and then the rest is on top of the frame. And it lays right down. Lift your top up out the way. Lays right down. Sometimes you might have to push in the sides to line up. This one lined up perfectly. Next up, don't forget your lid switch, which is going to stick down here. Plug in your lid switch. And beware of this hose, which is your pressure hose. And if that gets pinched between the, the, the frame, that will cause your washer to overflow because overflow, it doesn't sense the it cuts off the pressure from the switch. So just make sure that is in this gap and not getting pinched. Um, next up is your clips. And then your brass colored clips. So your personal one, while you got it taken apart, it's best to go ahead and clean the machine uh, while you're at it. Then I'll put my screws back in. You don't want to over tighten these because you'll actually crack the plastic. Just put them down so they're firm. And there you go. Again, uh, so typically uh, uh, as a technician, I would charge anywhere from 100, about $150 to $175 for that repair. Um, which is fair because you're paying for the knowledge and the time. Uh, without this video, if you guess it on your own, it'll probably take you a whole, a whole day to figure this out. Um, I've seen it done. Uh, so again, um, if you look at the bottom, there's a link to my website to get that coupler. Uh, it's under 10 bucks. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I usually answer within 24 hours. And again, thank you for watching my video.